Coming up on our next installment of America's Hope, people with disabilities can do more than what society says they are capable of doing. We'll talk to Emmy-nominated Pavar Snipe about that and what's happening in your home when your children are watching television. We've got a great program to introduce you to, A Wonderful Day with Mabel McClay, the creators of that series coming up in our next installment of America's Hope. Good evening, I'm Kelly Wright, and this is America's Hope. Tonight we're gonna to focus on education. Education in terms of what our children see on television, but also education in terms of people with disabilities and how they're viewed in media circles, especially when they aspire to perform in those entertainment and informational venues like television and movies. We're gonna to talk to a wonderful person who's coming up uh, she's Emmy nominated. And then we'll be talking to the creators of a wonderful children's program that you have to start watching. It's called A Wonderful Day with Mabel McClay. That's coming up. Let's get started. So welcome to the program, America's Hope. And my guest now is Pavar Snipe. Now Pavar is soaring with the dragons in the DreamWorks animated series. And Pavar was cast in the DreamWorks animated series, Dragons, the Nine Realms. Her character, Angela, is a super tough former military pilot. And she's a cool mom and disabled veteran in this role as she navigates her family in a new world filled with excitement, with danger. Oh, and by the way, dragons. And if the voice of her son, D'Angelo, is familiar, it's because that's Marcus Scribner from Blackish. So a new legend begins, and the legend here sitting right now in real life is Pavar Snipe. Pavar, so good to have you on the program. Kelly, it's so awesome to be here. It's, it's, it's just, this is a dream come true to sit here with you. Wow, well thank you. Yeah, um, welcome great. to America's Hope. And, and I should say in full disclosure, Pavar is someone that I've known for more than three years. <laughs> just a little bit, maybe a decade or two. Uh, a decade or two. <laughs> so, you know, tell me about this role that you got cast in doing the voiceover of this tough mom, this military veteran, and a disabled woman at mm -hmm. the same time. You know, it's, it's truly um, an honor to be able to play this role. Uh, Angela Baker on Dragons and Nine Realms, like we already said, is you know a military veteran. She's a mom. She's like this loving heart of the show, which is what I love about her. She comes in with so much warmth anytime she's in a particular scene. And it's just a wonderful um, opportunity to, to play somebody and have this kind of representation because as a black woman with a disability, you don't even see yourself on TV as it is, it's very rare. But to see a character like that in animation, is, is it just doesn't even happen. I really thought this place was gonna be cool. Honey, this place is different, yes, but people are people. You let down your guard and you'll find some way to connect. You always do. And when I think about that character and what it means for maybe a little disabled girl who's watching, you know, a disabled veteran, the child of a disabled veteran, to see that representation on screen is, it's beautiful. So in some of the exchanges that you have uh, with the characters in there, uh, for example, your son D'Angelo, played by Marcus Scribner of Blackish, mm -hmm. What, what, what can people learn from that? Oh man, what you can learn is that you can have a woman who is a mom who does all the things. You know, moms do all the things, but you have a character who is tough, right? She's tough with her son and she's very protective of her son, especially because of the world that they're in in this particular series. They're, they're in like kind of like a, a biodome type of situation. And so she's very protective of him and she doesn't even know that he's mixed in with these dragons and doing all these crazy things when she's not with him. But um, what you can really learn is just the joy of family and the joy of friendship. Um, she has a strong friendship with her son along with being a loving mom and also the love and support that she has with and for her husband is a 
adorable. It, it's just such a sweet thing to watch. So, so wait, let's unpack it. So you yeah. got a family unit. Yes. Husband, mother, wife. Uh, this is great, and and a child. Mm -hmm. So you have the whole family, and like you said, it 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 really brings out a response of having joy and hope and inspiration, yeah. even in the midst of an animated series. Mm -hmm. But let's let's jump off the page and talk about real life for okay. Pavar. You are uh, someone who's out there, so gifted, so talented, and yet you've had to buck the trend. You've had to teach Hollywood and 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 media okay. wherever you've worked. Uh, to respect and appreciate people with disabilities. Talk to me about that from the personal story of Pavar Snipe. You know, Kelly, this has been an amazing journey for me. Um, when you grow up with a lifelong disability, I've had rheumatoid arthritis since I was 11 years old. It's, it's very much like a love-hate relationship with your illness and with your identity. And for me, trying to find who am I, what do I want to do, you know, how can I... Um, be myself, make a difference, and, and feel fulfilled in my career, right? And so for the longest time, I was a radio personality, you know, and I did hip hop radio for a very long time, and that's an off-camera position. And after that, I became a creative producer in TV news, and I did that for a long time. And since um, 2015, when I decided I was going to go on this journey pursue, to pursue acting and comedy and writing, and I started to get on stage and I became a stand-up comedian and I became a sketch performer and I became somebody who creates digital content online and, and I've gained these followers who have watched, you know, my, watched my career progress and it's just me getting to the point where I started to feel like, you know what, I can be the person on stage. I can be the person that's seen. I can be somebody who writes and directs and creates their own characters and each one of those characters has a disability but how does that disability play out and show in these particular characters every time um it's it's something that is it wasn't easy to get there because we all have our our own um we all have our own things that we're self-conscious of whether or not it's something that's showing or it's not showing we all have a thing right but for me to get to the point where i was just like that thing does not matter because there is a higher purpose for me and I need to understand that God gave me this thing for a reason. God gave me this thing for a reason. And once I embraced that and realized that it doesn't even matter because I'm supposed to be doing these things and I'm supposed to show people with and without disabilities that it's okay. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Wow. It doesn't matter. You can do it. You can do whatever it is you want to do. Just do it anyway. You know, that is... That is such a, an amazing and inspiring outlook for anyone to grab hold of and possess. And uh, because there are, there are all, also people out there disabled in their, in their mental yes. acuity or, or just in their self-esteem, their self-worth. You had to break through all of that mm -hmm. because of the visible signs of a disability. Yes. So what would you say to those who are walking around thinking, Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. I, oh. Life is bad. Life, I'm never going to be able to make it. You know, and they don't even have a, a quote, quote unquote a physical disability. Mm -hmm. What would you say to, to people who are having pity parties? You know what? Today does not define your tomorrow. Oh, come on, say that again. <laughs> Today does not define your tomorrow. It's it's okay. It's okay to have a pity party. You can have your pity party. And you can have a moment where you're just like, this has happened to me, this has happened to me, this has happened to me, this person has done this to me. Yes, those things happened. And that's, it's okay to accept them. But the thing is, what do you do next? What do you do next? You can move forward from it. You can find ways to cope. You can find people to talk to. There's so many different outlets for you to, to grab onto so you can move past that thing and, and find ways to heal. Like I, I'm teaching a class at the new school right now. And it's a comedy class, and the class is called a Funny Ha Ha, The Art of Comedy. And the goal of this course is not to teach people how to be funny. That's not what it is. It's to teach people how they can use comedy in order to um, heal. Mm -hmm. You can have healing even through your comedy. It's to teach people how comedy can, can lift you up. Um, it can lift other people up. And a lot of comedy, honestly, comes from pain. Yeah. 
a lot of comedy comes from pain. A lot of comedy comes from tragedy. You think about your, your, your favorite comedians like a Richard Pryor, a John Mulaney who's hot right now, and they talk about their addiction. They talk about the pain that they've been through, but they find a way to bring that on stage and talk about it in a way that's relatable to the audience. I may have never had a drug addiction. I may have never had, like Richard Pryor, I wasn't born with a mother in a whorehouse. You know what I mean? But there are certain circumstances in his life that I can relate to. There are circumstances that, um, that might have been painful to me that I can now, that there's distance, I can make a joke out of it, you know? So really it's just about remembering that today does not define your tomorrow. Time and distance can mean anything, everything when, when you're healing. I'm talking to Pavar. We're gonna take a slight break and when we come back, we'll talk to him more about Pavar and her goals, her aspirations, because I can tell that you're you're not done yet. Oh, you have no. a lot more oh, no. to so much more. So much more. <laughs> okay. We're coming back with much more of Pavar Snipe in just a moment. Yeah. Welcome back to America's Hope. I'm talking to Pavar Snipe, literally a, a good friend of mine, and, and we lost contact for many, many years. Yeah. Uh, but you were still on your path, uh, as, as was I, on, in media, and I'm so proud of you. Can I just say that? Thank you. I'm proud of you and, and all that you have accomplished, and as I was stating earlier, you're not done yet. I can see in your eyes, yeah. I can hear it in your voice, and I know it's in your heart to aspire to do uh, bigger and better things. Yeah. What are some of those things you have in mind to do? Oh man, Kelly, I am so thankful for the opportunity that I've had to um, begin telling stories about disabled people who are doing things that are amazing. It, these stories are about people who are above and beyond what anybody can accomplish. You know, often in the dis disability world, uh, in the community, we hear people who tell me, oh, you're so amazing, look at you, you're so inspiring. Uh -huh. And although it is a compliment, and it's meant to be a compliment to be told that you're inspiring, you wanna get those compliments when you've done something that is worthy of so. You don't wanna hear someone just tell you that you're amazing because you're walking down the street, living life, right? You don't wanna hear you're amazing and inspiring because you're walking down a flight of stairs and you're just out being a normal person. But a blind woman who is a fashion designer and who's created her own NFT wedding dress and has been on the cover or has been in Essence magazine, that's amazing. You know what I mean? You have a Palestinian woman who has cerebral palsy who came, who came from the Middle East who went on to not only become an accomplished stand-up comedian, um, started a national um, Arab American comedy festival and went on to be, general, went on, to be on General Hospital like Ms. Zayed which is which was her goal in life and went on to general hospital you know you have um the real abilities film festival that happens every year in new york city founded by someone with a disability and then it goes on and it highlights the stories of disabled people around the world um those are the stories that i want to tell it's not about giving a gold star right, right. nobody wants a gold star for living but it is about showing that people with disabilities are doing amazing things for themselves and for their communities, and we need to know about it. It's also about um, finding stories where I'm showing people that there are resources for them, you know, because a lot of times you don't know what you can do until you see it. It's true. You don't know what you can do until you see it. Like I just did a story about um, uh, Matthew Whitaker, who is an amazing 22 year old blind jazz performer. He is phenomenal, he is literally a phenomenon. He went to a blind music school in New York City and recently went back to his school and had this huge fundraiser wow. so he could continue to give back to the school that helped lift him up to become who that, he is today. That, that ability to give back. Yep. And that's, that's who you are. And, and for, for another episode of Full Disclosure, mm -hmm. I, I watched you as a colleague of mine. Yeah. We, we used to work together in the Norfolk, Virginia market, mm -hmm. beautiful Hampton Roads. For those who don't know that lovely place, go to Norfolk, Virginia, Virginia Beach, one of the largest naval bases in the world. Uh, but the community itself, uh, the community has a big heart. Huge. And you and I worked at uh, Wavy TV, and uh, we, we had a, a great working relationship together, along with the other people that worked together mm -hmm. with us. Uh, it was just like a family. It really was. My close, uh, still some of my closest friends in life um, I have a, as a result of working there. And that was my first job. Yeah. That was my first job out of school. I was working in a little supply closet. <laughs> when I first started, I was literally working out of a supply closet 
producing news for the local news station, the local um, um, news radio station, and being like a liaison between the two. And again, I had not even dreamed of this. Yeah. This was not even a thought. You know, and I, I yeah. watched you, and I, you were always uh, so pleasant to work with. And, and then you went on to go into radio and worked at the number one radio morning show there, mm -hmm. uh, like you said, in hip hop. The Buddha Brothers Morning the Show. The Buddha Brothers, yeah, we'll, we'll give a shout out to them as well. Yeah. And you, you just kept excelling and excelling and excelling. You know, what was, what was your drive? What was your motivation? Oh man, that is a really good question. I think for one thing, I have wonderful parents who never told me that I can't, right? And so when you have a family that is supportive of you, supportive of you, and they don't tell you what you can't do, you, you proceed. And I was always just ready to go to the next thing. I was always ready to go to the next thing. I was never afraid to try. That's another important thing. Never afraid to try. Don't be afraid to try. Because if you fail, oh well, so what? So what? All right, yeah. and try something else. Even when I, at the age of 38 years old, quit my job in Virginia to pursue a comedy career, I was just like, I have to try, because if I don't try, then I will have failed. I can't believe you said you were 38 years old when you decided to leave Norfolk, Virginia. I was 38. Because, you know, I, when I look at you, I keep thinking, this little pay bar was my friend, <laughs> and I forgot that you grew up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you've grown up well, my friend. And so now, uh, let me let me make sure I make this abundantly clear. You are Emmy nominated. Emmy nominated, uh, yeah. Pave our snipe. Congratulations Thank to that. Thank you. Thank uh, that's, you. That is not easy to accomplish. Emmy nominated, and I believe that with you doing all of these different kinds of shows and programs, not that you're seeking an Emmy, but I think people, the industry is going to recognize all the great work you're doing, and you'll get that Emmy. So. Before we went on, we were mm -hmm. talking about uh, disabled veterans. Yes. And you were mentioning how there are many disabled veterans that you met in Norfolk, Virginia. Yeah. As I just mentioned, Norfolk is not only home to the United States Navy uh, with a large naval base. This, uh, you know, the SEALs train there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's a Top Gun school there, but there's also the United States Army. There's Air the Force, Marines. There's yeah. the Air Force. There's the Coast Guard. All of them yep. are represented in that area. So talk to me about the disabled veterans that you met and, and how we should appreciate mm. their service. Man, I, I'm gonna try to talk about this and not get a little teary right now. I have a group of amazing girlfriends who are disabled veterans, disabled black women veterans who worked so hard, worked so, so hard for their country and worked so hard when they were in the military and um, yeah, had injuries as a result and had to retire out. Um, you know, girlfriends who like, you know, worked with aircraft and, and, and mechanics and, you know, all kinds of things that, and they, they have lifelong issues as a result. They're thankful for the work that they had and I'm very thankful for their service. Um, and they have a sisterhood amongst each other that's just beautiful. They have their own sorority that they, that they have where they give back to their community still and support each other and it's just a beautiful thing. And they're just so smart and so kind and so generous. And so for me to be able to voice a character like Angela, mm -hmm. even though I am not a military person, um, to be able to voice a character like that and represent for them is something that makes it even more special for me. That's awesome. So this, this show is called America's Hope. Yes. And I've got to ask you in my final question, first of all, you've got to come back. Uh, whenever you have a new project or just say, hey, Kelly, I just want to come by and say hi. Uh, you got to do that. But uh, what is your hope for America? Ooh, oh, man. Oh, right now we're in a crazy time. So first I have to do a world hope. Yeah. Um, world hope, I just hope that we can really learn to love, love and support and live in peace amongst each other and let people live first of all, and have compassion and remember that we're all human and we share this space of earth. We share this space of earth together. Um, so that's the first hope. Second hope uh, for America goes along with my mission, which is to change the, gen change the dynamic and to change the narrative when it comes to how disabled people are portrayed and live their lives in, in our country. My hope is for there to be marriage equality for people with disabilities. People with disabilities cannot get married without losing their benefits. Mm -hmm. And that's wrong. That's insane. Um, it doesn't even make any sense. 
um, equal employment, equity for people with disabilities, and for people with disabilities to be able to go out and enjoy their life and not have to worry about how they're gonna get there, right. if they're gonna be stairs, if there's gonna be an elevator, if they're gonna get there and the elevator's not gonna work, right. you know, transportation to get where they need to be whenever they need to be there in New York City, Los Angeles, wherever you are, fair transportation, fair employment, and equal opportunity to be gainfully employed and be in positions of leadership. And that's whether you're on camera, off camera, in finance, law, whatever it is that you want to do, for everyone with disabilities to have the same opportunities to excel and be joyful. Hey, Mark, thank you, you. Thank you. I, I got to tell you, much love to you. I love you. Love you too, Kelly. So proud of you. And, and thank you for having the kind of hope that speaks to people who are living in hopeless situations. Appreciate you so much. Emmy nominated Pavar Snipe, a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> Out of that supply closet. Thank you, Lord. Out of the closet. Out of the supply closet. <laughs> I love her. And America, you love her. Make sure you check out her series. And what's the series called again? It's called Dragons, the Nine Realms, and it is on Hulu and Peacock. So proud of you. We're back with more after this. Welcome back to America's Hope. What if I asked you about having a wonderful day with Mabel McClay? You might say, huh? So I want to introduce you to the creators of A Wonderful Day with Mabel McClay because I want you to have a wonderful moment with them. Uh, it's Ryan and Katie Chase and Katie is the star in and created the role of Mabel and she is a blend of Mr. Rogers and a little bit of Mary Poppins. Uh, just a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. Anyway, she invites children and families to connect and create th through fun projects, songs, book reading, and friendship. And, and Mabel is this kind, creative, and fun. And then there's her dog, Jasper, who's always up to something. And so Ryan, I wanna get you in the picture as well. What's your role in this wonderful day with Mabel McClay? Let me begin with you, sir. Well, um, I was lucky enough that uh, Bent Key came to us and said, "Hey, do you have any um, do you have any ideas for a kids show?" And uh, and of course, I had a dream idea, and I said, uh, uh, "Yes, I have this idea where there's a uh, it's a show that um, harkens back to the shows that we grew up with. You know, a little slower paced. It has kind of a um, a vintage feel to it, and there's." Um, uh, virtues and values, and, and it's not just uh, an entertaining show to keep the kids busy while you while you uh, cook dinner, but that's something that they can take with them, and um, and hopefully something that the whole family could watch. And so, uh, um, and, and my role was uh, was uh, trying to cram all that in there with as much uh, classic uh, TV uh, um, reference that I could. And uh, and my big stipulation was I want this host to drive an Amphicar, a car that's a boat that they really made. And uh, and luckily, uh, uh, Bent Key said, great, let's make that magic happen. And so uh, we did. And, and luckily, uh, I married uh, Mabel McClay, um, <laughs> who uh, very much has those magical qualities in our, our family. We have three kids. And so um, it just, uh, it was kind of a match made in heaven, this the whole project. So, so Katie, you've helped Mabel McClay come to life. Talk to me about her and your role and how the two of you have merged together to bring this character who has virtue for social and emotional skills like, oh, gentleness, joy, optimism, creativity, kindness, and curiosity. Yes, I think we really led with Mabel with this idea of a character who speaks really gently and calmly and perhaps a little slowly to children. And she really trusts their ability to keep up. She uses big vocabulary words. She isn't afraid to silently walk through her house and wonder about something. She doesn't feel the need to sort of tap dance for children or, or give them some big wild and crazy uh, uh, show. She's really grounded. And so we loved the tone of Mr. Rogers growing up and how, how that show felt. And we really tried to build a character around that idea. You know, uh, I was reading your bio and it says that you studied acting at the New York Conservatory for Dramatic Arts and then moved to Los Angeles, as many uh, performers do, and there you performed comedy and acting. Uh, and then you and your husband uh, ran an award-winning children's improv program called Studio uh, LOL until 2020. Talk to me about that and how it, how it 
led to what you're doing now? Sure. Yes, we we both dabbled as actors in Los Angeles many years ago, and and our we realized we needed a side job, and so we opened a business, and it really took off. And we worked with kids doing improv, and we did much of the same work we're doing now, which is introducing social emotional skills to kids in a playful way. And throughout the pandemic, we brought some content online for kids, and then we also recently not recently we we have three young children, so sort of the past seven years we've been raising kids and. Um, you know, I think being a mother probably was the thing that most prepared me to play this role. Uh, we sort of walked away from acting a long time ago, go, go, because it wasn't um, completely interesting to us. But now that we are parents, I feel like we have something to say and something to share and um, a, a point of view of how, how kids shows can feel, which is a bit more gentle and kind and, um, and warm and uh, what would you say? More uh, the way shows used to feel. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and <laughs> we were lucky too. Our side job, yes. our side job, ended up becoming our our real job, our passion. Once we were doing that uh, improv school for kids, and then we found that um, uh, it was just uh, it was the most rewarding and uh, watching kids uh, blossom and and uh, grow in their confidence. And we weren't trying to make uh, uh, kids stars, though some kids came through and they were. But uh, we were just trying to uh, encourage kids to be. Uh, you know, uh, brave and confident and kind, and 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 we were blessed more than than they were. Uh, it was just such a great time, and who knew, we had no idea what's preparing us for this show now. Hey, so let me ask you both. Uh, I guess Ryan, I'll begin with you. When when you offer this kind of show, or wanted to do it in Hollywood, did did you find that uh, you were bucking a trend in Hollywood? Uh, did you get some pushback from people saying? Uh, we don't want to do that kind of show. Has something changed when it comes to children's programming? Well, I think for us, um, we never even assumed it could be possible to make this show uh, in, in Hollywood. So um, we had tucked this idea away and, and um, we're uh, still doing our, our kids improv school. And we thought, well, it's yes, there has been a shift, it seems, in kids entertainment. We thought, yeah, there just probably isn't a, a world where um, anybody would take this seriously. And then uh, Bent Key came along and um, and we've known uh, Jeremy who uh, created the Daily Wire. We've known him for a long time. And so he said he had this great idea for kids content uh, for a platform. And then he said, uh, you're my kids people. Do you have any ideas? And I, we thought, I can't, I can't believe that's actually going to happen. Uh, it's uh, kind of a one in a million thing here. Cause yeah, I don't think it would really, uh, probably we wouldn't have gotten any doors if we were trying to to make this in Hollywood, unfortunately. And uh, Ben Key came along at, at the right time. Well, Katie, you know, that's a good thing that he came along at the right time and you already had the right plan for a time such as this. What do you think children uh, need more now than ever when it comes to children's programming? Uh, I mean, obviously your character and, and, and the, the character Jasper you make these neat gadgets and you create fun projects, but but where are you connecting with the with the child and even the adult's inner child? Well, I think one of the ideas we really wanted to celebrate was the idea of wonder. That's why it's in the title, A Wonderful Day. And I think to us, it kind of means we should be celebrating the idea that life is wonderful. I believe that teachers and parents and and characters on TV have a responsibility to have that optimism and, and to believe that truth, that life is, is really wonderful. And also it's worth wondering about. And so Mabel is a character who wonders all day long about objects and people and places. And she goes on so many adventures that are driven by this love of wondering, this love of curiosity, which young children have so naturally. So we're really interested in preserving that and celebrating that quality in them. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in a moment with more of Ryan and Katie Chase and a wonderful day with Mabel McClay. Hi, Jasper. Oh, hi, Mabel. My, oh, my. <laughs> You've got a lot of stuff going on in here. Yeah, I got all kinds of stuff here. I got everything I need. And welcome back to America's Hope. I'm talking to the creators of A Wonderful Day with Mabel McClay. Uh, Ryan, I got to ask you, it's, the, the world is, is loud, it's busy, it's fast paced. And, and you're actually able to slow it down to say, uh, Johnny, Susie, I'm just here to talk to you and, and really entertain you and inform you and inspire you. Uh, what's that like? 
uh, it feels like a, a great privilege and as she said a great responsibility i know that uh you know with our own kids um if they're watching things it seems like um it's trying to to catch uh catch their attention catch their attention and uh we're we purposefully wanted to make a show that wasn't uh trying to uh chase a kid but uh but uh, sit down the way that your grandmother would sit down with you and, and, and read a book with you. And you and uh, and even that idea was when we were making the set and designing that, I was saying, man, I want a kid to see this. And and every show, see a new part of the set, they would love to sit and, and tinker or have somebody read them a book. And um, and you don't have to do that. You don't have to chase your kid's attention, uh, or at least in our show. We're, we, we trust that the, 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 the viewer will will sit with us and um, and uh, and can take those pauses and uh, Take the information in and let it sink into their mind and hopefully their heart and uh, that it will uh, bear some good fruit. And uh, mm, we just hope mm. it's a blessing. And uh, we're and mm. we're just trying to uh, do our best to, to put a little little nugget of good out there. Yeah, you said something really, really good there that I want Katie to help unpack. You talked about take their hearts, their minds and then hopefully be a blessing. So you're looking at the whole person uh, in that child, mind, body and spirit. Katie, that's, uh, that's something that I think most parents who really care about their little ones really want to see them have, and they want to give that to them. Uh, getting it in your kind of program, what does that mean to you personally, especially as a mom, and, and then also as uh, the character Mabel? Well, recently our, our daughter, who's five, screened um, one of our episodes that's coming out soon on Courage. and. She watched it and, and she's just glued to the screen. It's amazing and so validating to see real children be able to stick with um, with what we've created. And um, and so she watched the episode on Courage and then she went outside a little while later and I wasn't in earshot. She wasn't saying this for me, but I heard her singing the song that we created about courage. Courage, courage, courage. You can do things when you're scared. And she was trying to climb the tree that's in our backyard that her brother built this huge tree house in and she's never been able to climb it. And she genuinely was singing this song to herself uh, to get up the tree and it was so beautiful and it felt like what I want every child to take away from our show is this building up of these skills um, in a way that is sweet and gentle and not forced and not babyish, but that that reaches them and that was our, that was where our hearts were making it. So when we hear some of that feedback, it's the very most meaningful. That is so good. Uh, courage, courage, courage. <laughs> it's, it's actually contagious. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, you know, you, th those are themes. Uh, what are other themes of the episodes? I mean, you talked about courage. What are some of the other themes that you, that you actually uh, provide for the children? Um, in season one, we have 20 episodes. I won't remember all 20 right now, but some that we're, we're going to see are, we, sure, we have um, gentleness and patience and kindness. We have focus and respect. We have uh, responsibility and um, uh, courage, contentment. Contentment was a beautiful episode to unpack, as was forgiveness. Wow. Um, and we have such a specific point of view um, in our in our faith and everything about some of these words and what they mean and contentment we kind of think of as being at rest and what that means and um, so it was interesting because it's not a, com a strictly faith based program to unpack those ideas given our very specific worldview but be able to unpack them in a way that feels accessible and wonderful for all families these these timeless virtues that we all agree on um, in. in we really aspire to do it in the way that Fred Rogers did. He was a man of such strong faith and yeah. such had such an enormous impact in the world. Um, we will never live up to Mr. Rogers, <laughs> but but it's it's wonderful to have him as a hero and and as an object of our uh, intentional um, approach in that way. Yeah, you know, people still talk about Fred Rogers, and uh, they even talk about the fact that he testified before Congress uh, to explain to Congress why. Um, television for children, programming for uh, tele for programming uh, for children was so important, so valuable. And of course, he went on to, to show the world this faith that he had in God and, and in humanity. Um, so, you know, Ryan, uh, on this program, America's Hope, I've often said that the greatness of our nation actually begins in the homes of its people. 
you and Katie are married, you have three lovely children, uh, you're, you're now showing the world uh, family life through the, the lens of, of Mabel and uh, the wonderful world that she has. Tell me what it's like in terms of, of building a solid home to create a solid foundation for this nation. Uh, well, for us, uh, you know, uh, I feel, you know, our, our cup runneth over. We, uh, we have three healthy uh, uh, kids that we're, you know, um, so blessed to, uh, to have uh, in our family. And so our, uh, because our family is our number one priority, I think, um, I think, yeah, all the, all the good comes from um, if you can build a, a solid foundation um, in the home and, uh, and get those kids uh, grounded. And in the same way that um, for us, in our faith where you could, you can have, you can be at rest if you're confident in um, that uh, there's a, you know, there's a, a, a person in authority that, uh, that God has uh, done something and, uh, and you can have confidence in him in the same way kids can have, if they have a solid foundation at home, they, they, uh, they get, they can, they'll have sh a sure footing to go out there and, uh, and combat or uh, the things of the, the, the world that come at them. And so for us, it's very important. And uh, even in making the show, we were, uh, very uh, rigid in our, our um, and Ben Key was lovely. We, in our boundaries of, we want to be home to make dinner. You know, it can't be a normal Hollywood thing where when we were young people trying to be actors, you know, you'd be gone uh, 16 hours a day. And uh, well, when you're young and you're, you don't have a family, you're okay, that's just the gig, but not for us. And we, we, uh, we are very specific about, we want to, I want to make them breakfast and I got to make them dinner and put them to bed. So, um, and Ben Key was, was great. And I think uh, that, um, I just think that that being a priority, uh, the family um, structure is uh, is vital. It's absolutely vital, and um, uh, we just want to encourage that, and uh, uh, you know, be a little light for for folks who uh, are hoping to do that as well, and maybe folks who who don't have that but uh, uh, are trying to. And so, well stated, Dad. Well stated, uh, and and of course, taking care of family is job number one, and and then of course, you're taking care of other families by by being uh, that that model that people can watch uh, uh, with through through Mabel, uh, Katie, uh, any anything else planned for the future? It, it, this this is an it, or do you have more coming up? We are already in development on season two of Mabel, and the the plan is to just keep on making them as long as everybody will have us, and um, we're really excited. It's really it's wonderful work. I was just listening to him talk, and I was thinking as a mother, I've spent the past few years really just being a stay-at-home mom and homeschooling our kids. And and that is wonderful work too. And I was absolutely content to to do that and pour my gifts into my children that way. And we really are people who believe um, that when the world is dark, we can pour into our homes, pour into our own families and and um, make the world a better place. And so, uh, so we're excited to keep doing both of those things because we also love our job. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It's centered around family. Our children get to help come up with ideas and, <laughs> and things like that. So we're excited to continue this work and, and keep plugging along to season two. You guys, I, I love what you're doing. I, I, I just love how you're providing some solid uh, programming for our children. Uh, which really helps uh, a lot of children grow to be healthier, stronger, better. Uh, I got to ask you both a question. Uh, what's your hope for America? Oh, that's a great question. Um, wow. Uh, my hope for America is, um, oh man. Well, you know, uh, well, uh, <laughs> it's such a big question. It's, it's a big Everything question. rushes to mind. Um, I just, you know, I, I'm just always thinking about, um, uh, the the family aspect. If, if um, I hope I hope that uh, that uh, there's a a, 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 a kindness, a, a gentleness, a, a camaraderie that can come back where uh, you know um, folks were uh, uh, there. You, you could believe all kinds of things, but at the end of the day, we're all Americans, and um, and and we believe the importance of uh, family and uh, and faith. And so I, I hope uh, my my hope is is that that I think that ultimately uh, wins out and. Um, uh, and I, I hope we keep going and heading in that direction. Absolutely. I think also we we believe that uh, all Americans agree on the important stuff. We really do. The the when it comes down to it, and hopefully the things we see in our in our show that we present on Mabel, those beliefs are what we all agree on. So 
my hope would be that everyone could see that. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing, and the series is a wonderful day with Mabel McClay. I want to thank you both for joining us and uh, praying for you to have a, a, a great success with this kind of program. Certainly, it's needed in this day and time. Uh, Ryan and Katie Chase, thank you so much. Thank you so much thank for being you. America's Hope. Don't be a stranger. Come on back and give me some more courage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you thank so you much. Thank you so much. All right. God bless you. Keep doing what you're doing. And I want to thank our guests tonight, Ryan and Katie Chase, as well as Pavar Snipe. What a wonderful group of people who have come together to do the right thing for America and the world. In closing tonight, my final word is this. Let's take care of our families. Let's take care of each other. Let's actively care to take care of each other. Just as we heard from Pavar talking about the fact that we should never overlook people with disabilities, but actually open our arms wide so that they can come in to show us their talent, their gifts, and treasure what they bring to the table, not only in the workplace, but in the space of living whole lives fully and completely. And let's remember that home is where the heart is, and certainly Ryan and Katie would definitely echo that by saying home is where the heart is and make sure your heart is full of joy as you teach your children and your children's children how to be valued and how to live productive lives and keep hope alive. That's it, America. Until next time, God bless you. Good night. In my America, my children are black and white. One shade of beautiful, so precious in God's sight. In my America, all lives matter. So let's stop the chatter that tears us apart. We are a family Together you and me Agreeing to disagree But still live in harmony The dream that gives hope to us Is as strong as it ever was United we stand, divided we fall, that's my America. In my America, there is no left or right. We're all on common ground. Darkness gives way to light. In my America, you give more than you take. And when someone has lost their way, you lend them a hand and say, We are a family together. Agreeing to disagree But still live in harmony The dream that gives hope to us Is as strong as it ever was United we stand Divided we fall That's my amazing
but still live in harmony. The dream that gives hope to us is as strong as it ever was. United we stand, divided we fall. That's my America. United we stand, divided we fall. That's my America. From sea to shining sea, I believe in God, I believe in you, and I believe in we. My America. We agree to disagree, but still live in harmony because we are a family. God bless your America and my America. United we stand, divided.